Yo, what's up guys? It's the new sensation, Vigo Notation here. Um, today we've got a little bit of a quiz video, figuring out if you guys, the audience, are worse than a new player. So, I've got a group of friends with me here, um, who have v fairly limited experience when it comes to card games. Um, if you guys want to introduce yourselves and maybe say some of your experience when it comes to card games, that would be great. My name is Leon. I have <laughs> Shut down. no experience with card games. I'll go next. Uh, they call me Midtrox. They call me Midtrox. Uh, I've never played card games Mid before. <laughs> no, uh, I have played one game of Dragon Ball. Um, and I'm Callum. I have limited knowledge of Dragon Ball, um, and that's really about it. Yeah, I feel like Callum is definitely the most experienced out of all, out of you lot, because he's considering he goes to your locals. He's yeah. started playing <laughs> Dragon Ball recently, so he might have a bit of an advantage. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna run through some slightly obscure ruling questions in Dragon Ball, and um, you guys are gonna answer them and see how well you do. For the first question, it's a fairly simple question. My opponent controls this card in rest mode, which means that I can attack it. And I attack him with my card. So my card has a power of 10,000, and his card has a power of 10,000. So the first question is, who wins? Or who wins the battle? The attacker or the defender? Say if anyone's got it right. Somebody has got it right. Oh, okay. how, how many of us? One. One? Oh. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Easy one to start. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, you guys can need to read your answers out. Let's go with that. Uh, I put defense wins ties, question mark. I put defender. Is it then me? I wasn't listening. Yeah. Oh, I put attacker. Cool. And I said they tie. So. Well, I wonder who it could be. <laughs> <laughs> the person who got it correct was Callum. Which he did have a slight advantage about because he would have known that from his games of Dragon Ball. I don't think you're going to know the rest of them, though, to be honest. Okay. Because they're all it's fairly so weird. Yeah. Next question involves this card, Koitsukai, and Son Gohan Baby's Minion. So for this question, I have Koitsukai in my drop area, and I activate its effect, which states, I remove it from my drop area, and then I won't read the irrelevant part, so the relevant part of the text says, for the turn, if your opponent plays a battle card with 20,000 power or less, they choose two cards from their hand and send them to the warp. Now, my opponent then proceeds to play Sun Gohan Baby's Minion, which uh, is a battle card that has the keyword skill of Servant. So it's 15k power, but the Servant says that this card gains 10,000 power and can't be switched to active mode during your charge phase. So the question is, do they then have to warp two cards because of the servant skill, or does it check on the original card's power as it's coming into play? Can you read the first card out again? Yeah. So, if your opponent plays a battle card with 20,000 power or less, they choose two cards from their hand and send them to the warp. The options were... Um, either they warp two cards because the Gohan is considered 25,000 power, or, or I mean, they warp two cards because the Gohan's considered 15,000 power, or they don't because it's considered 25,000. <laughs> Callum's just sent me no energy Pepe laughter. He can't do the effect, he doesn't have energy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just not including, like, <laughs> cards that aren't relevant. But energy is relevant, he needs the energy to cast. <laughs> <laughs> Send your answer. That is the answer. No energy, Pepe laughter. <laughs> sure. Uh, I put. I think it has. It's considered to have less than twenty thousand. 
and the, the effect happens after the original card's effect. So the, the warp would happen. I put the warp one. Uh, I put the warps two. <laughs> yep, same. Okay. So, you're actually all wrong. No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. They do not warp two. <laughs> I had to check that ruling this morning because I was not sure. But you do not have to warp two. Now, this next question involves the same card, Gohan Baby's Minion, but I'll mention the next part of its effect this time because that's actually relevant. So, the next question involves my opponent plays Sun Gohan Baby's Minion um, using the negate attack skill. And Son Gohan Baby's Minion has an effect where when this card is played, your opponent can't attack for the turn unless they choose one card in their hand and place it at the bottom of the deck. And that they have to effectively bottom deck one card for every attack they do. Um, so when they play that card, you then respond by playing this Jiren card, which says, counterplay, you play this card, you draw a card, and then cards in your hand can't be returned to your deck by your opponent's skills for the turn. So, the question is, uh, can you attack and then bottom deck one each time from the Gohan Baby's minion skill? Can you attack, but then you don't have to bottom deck any cards from your hand? Or can you not attack for the rest of the turn? Uh, I've gone with can attack, doesn't bottom deck. I'm with the same as Leon. I was also the same. Can't <laughs> uh, wait for us all to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are again all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, the reason behind it is it's uh, the Gohan says when this card is played, your opponent can't attack for the turn unless they choose a card in their hand and place it at the bottom of the deck. Um. So that you specifically have to bottom deck a card to be able to attack. And because you can't bottom deck a card because it's your opponent's skill, you then can't attack. Ah, yeah. So, the next question involves this leader, which has a permanent skill. You negate the energy exhaust skill of god cards in all of your areas. Um, energy exhaust, just like a negative skill that some cards have. And this card specifically has the energy exhaust skill as its only skill. So the question is, um, if you're negating the energy exhaust skill of this card, are you then able to choose it with this Whis, which says... When this card is played from your hand or at the end of the battle when it's used in a combo, you add up to one skillless battle card with an energy cost of two or less from your deck or drop area to your hand. So skillless cards are cards without skills. Um, the question is, does this then get considered as a skillless card if the energy exhaust is negated? What was the wording on the first card again? On the Gr Great Priest card, it says... Yeah. Negate the energy exhaust skill of god cards in all your areas. Okay, we have some variance in the answers this time. That's good. <laughs> Big. You guys, are not, you guys haven't become a hive mind. Haven't hive mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we have, and we're all just god. discussing it in our hive mind. Yeah. Um, I think it's still considered as having a skill. It just has a skill that is negated. So it isn't considered a skillless card for the effect. I think that it's considered a skillless card. Um, I have put similar to Leon, so it has a skill, its own leader just negates it, but it still technically has a skill. Yep, I'm the same. Hey Patrick, you said... Which one? Wait, same as the uh, other two. Same as Khan and Leon. Uh, you, you sent me a message saying the same the as Noah's. Wait. I oh. It. oh no, 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 never mind. What's I'm going on? Stupid. What's going on, Patrick? I was, I was going to say, no, no, yeah. all of it is bad. Bad host, I feel like. Yeah, 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 true. 
<laughs> um, so... <laughs> Dislike video. <laughs> <laughs> Dislike and unsubscribe. I'm doing it now, I've got his channel up, I'm unsubscribing. So with this one, in this situation, this card is considered a skillless card. Hey! So Noah gets the point for that one. I'm gonna win, Leon. <laughs> Callum, you'll be happy to know, I do have the energy for this one, because the energy oh, okay. is somewhat relevant. Okay. So, this question is, you have this uh, turret leader, and the permanent states, uh, or the relevant part of the permanent states, you treat non-black battle cards with Xeno in their character names and original energy costs of 9 or less in your hand as if they had no specified cost and reduce their energy costs by 1. So, to try and simplify that for you guys, uh, the card in question is in fact a Xeno character, although I'm not able to reveal whether it's a black or non-black battle card yet. Um, And it does cost 9 or less. Um, this specific card in question is Sun Gohan Prismatic Burst. And it is a special type of card, it's a multicolor card. So it is simultaneously considered as green and black. Um, and it also has a permanent where if you activate its skill, and you have three or more black multicolor cards in your battle area and or energy area, hence the three cards in the energy area. Um, you reduce the activation cost of this card by one black. So, to try and break this down a little bit simpler, do you see next to the two in the top left hand corner of the card, there's a green dot and a black dot? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes. So that is the specified cost. And what that means is when playing the card, you have to pay one green energy and one black energy to play it. Um, and that is what's called the specified cost, which is what this leader intends to remove if this card is a specific target for that leader permanent. So, um, my question is, and obviously ask questions if you don't understand because this one is a little more complicated. Um, the options are A, the card costs one energy as it's not a non-black battle card, so it doesn't get reduced by the Toa permanent, but it does get reduced by its own permanent. B, the card costs one energy because um, the Toa permanent does affect it, but the uh, black specified cost gets removed because of the Toa permanent, and so the energy cost doesn't get reduced by its own permanent. Or C, the card costs zero because it gets reduced by both. Hover over the um, one that's getting reduced again. Sure. It's just the permanent skill at the bottom that's the relevant effect yeah. as well. I forgot which way round A and B were, so I have put C. <laughs> so, you said it costs zero? Yes. Cool. I put B. I can't remember which one that is. That's what I put. Uh, I put the leader, leader's effect goes through it. So, uh, but not the other ones that don't stack. Cool. I put it costs zero. Okay, so the answer is B, which is that the leader effect affects it and not its own permanent. Which means Callum and Noah both get a point. Um, the reason being, for some reason, even though it says non-black battle cards, it's considered a non-black battle card, even though it's also black. Um, and then the specified cost gets removed by the leader and so it can't reduce itself by the one black energy because it doesn't have that black energy requirement anymore. Excellent. I have this pig looking guy on my board and I can evolve him into this which basically means I just pay the energy cost and then put the card on top of him. Um, my opponent 
uses this counterplay. Counterplays are something you can intuitively enough use when your opponent plays something to counter it. Um, and this counterplay in particular states that you may discard this card from your hand, and if you do, the battle card being played is returned to its owner's hand instead of being played. So the question comes, if this card gets counterplayed by this card and goes back to your hand, what happens to the card underneath it? And the options are A, it goes back to the hand as well. B, it goes to the drop area, which is like the graveyard. Or C, it remains on the field. So when you put the card on top of the card, what does that actually do again? Um, uh, for that process, it kind of me it means that the uh, bigger guy will be considered on the field, but the one underneath it kind of gets removed. But it doesn't like go to the drop area; it just stays underneath it. Okay. I've gone for goes to hand also. Uh, I said pig stays where it is. I put that it goes back to your hand. And I put that it goes back to your hand. So, the way that this one works is, as Noah nicely put, the pig stays where it is. Um, the it's kind reason, of good at Dragon Ball, you know. The reason behind this is when you're, um, when you're counterplaying with a card similar to this, the card being played isn't considered to have been on the field yet. And so because it never hits the field, this the card underneath it never technically leaves the field, so it just kind of stays. So the next question is... Your opponent has one of these two guys on their field. They're just... They have no skills, they're just 15,000 power, each of them. And they go to play the other one. And you respond with this Yamcha in your hand, which states, it's another counterplay skill, um, you choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards and they get minus 15,000 power for the turn, then play this card. So the question is, how many battle cards can you choose to minus 15,000? Is it A, 0, B, 1, or C, 2? And just to clarify... Can you, the, yeah, can you read the effect again? Yeah. So just to clarify, one of these cards is already on the board and the other one is being played, um, which is the one you're responding to here. And it says, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, they get minus 15,000 power for the turn, then play this card. Yeah, I've got... You can do it on the card that is already played, but not the one that is being played. One. Yeah, I put the same as Leon. You can put it on the card that's already out, but not the one that's coming up, even though you're countering it. I put two. So, the three of you who put one are correct. Um, yeah. This is a very obscure counterplay and a lot of rulings. Like, a lot of people just don't understand how it works, me included, for a very long time. Um, but yeah, the way it works is you can only get stuff that's in play, so you can't oftentimes hit the card that's being played. But then there are also situations where you can hit the card that's being played. But you can't hit it if you're just like normally playing it from your hand, which is that specific situation. Okay. The next question is another more simple one. Um, my opponent controls this unison card. I'll probably explain unisons in a later ruling um, but for now it's just a card that's on the field that's all that really matters and the card has a skill which states when your opponent combos you may place up to one card from their combo area in its drop area if you do negate the skill for the duration of the turn and comboing is something you either player can do to either boost up their attacks or boost up their defenses when an attack is occurring and so my opponent has that, and I go to combo with Bojack the Evildoer, who has the effect for two energy. At the end of the battle in which this card is used in a combo from your hand or energy, 
you may play this card from your drop area. So the question is, if this uh, unison effect triggers to send the card being comboed with to the drop area, will you still be able to play the card at the end of the battle? I have gone with no. I have gone with yes. I've also put yes, because it was in a combo, but got removed from the combo, but was still effectively in one, so you should be able to put it back in. I said yes as well. Okay, so Leon is actually correct for this one. <laughs> Honestly, I don't entirely know why this is the case, but it is. <laughs> Um, you got the dumb ruling. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an annoying ruling because um it kind of means that there's cards that just kill Bojack. I think it's to do with um because of the fact that it triggers at the end of a battle. So it's it has to like check that it's been in the combo area for the entire battle or something like that. But I, I genuinely don't know why that one is the case. So this one, this ruling uses some new cards, which are technically not out yet, but... Exclusive? So I'll have to explain Unisons real quick. Um, Unisons, as you can see, they're these cards with the X's in the top left corner rather than a specific number for their energy cost. And that is because you can pay any amount of energy for them. Um, most of them have, as you can see, Next to the X, this one has the two black dots that I mentioned earlier as specified cost. So for this one in particular, you would at least have to pay two black energy for them. Um, and then you could pay any number of energy upwards of that. And the reason that you might want to do that is because it adds, for every extra energy that you pay, you get to add an extra marker to it. And the marker of the markers are effectively like the unison's lives. So if the unison gets attacked, rather than dying, it just loses a marker instead. The question for this one, so for this specific unison, it doesn't have a specified cost. So it doesn't have like a minimum energy requirement that you need to pay for it. So the question is, and it's sort of a two-part question, um, the first part being, can you play this unison for zero energy? Um, and also I should specify, if a unison reaches zero markers, it dies. Um, so can you play this unison for zero energy? And then if you can, uh, it has this skill called Empower. So for this specific unison, it has Empower Black 2, which means if this card replaces a black unison card as it enters play, it carries over up to two of its markers. So, just to make it clearer, I'll put two markers on the unison. But the second part of the question is, if you can play this unison for zero with zero markers on, will the empower effect trigger to carry the two markers over? Or will the game mechanic of it being on zero markers kick in first, sending it to the drop area before it can gain the markers? Can you go through the options again for me? Sure. So, basically, option A is you can't play a unison for zero energy. Option B is you can play a unison for zero energy, but it goes to the drop area before it gains the markers. Or C, you can play it for zero energy, and then it will trigger in power and gain the two markers. And survive. Uh, I've changed mine twice. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> I said you, you can't play for zero, and then you can play for zero, but it dies, and I've changed back to just you can't play for zero. Okay. I said you can't play for zero. I put that you could, and it would gain the two, so it would then survive. I said you could, but it would go to the drop zone. <laughs> So, the answer to this one is you can, in fact, play it for zero, and it does also gain the markers before it dies. So Callum is correct in that. Hello. Oh, this next ruling is very interesting. I'm hooked. Yeah. 
I'm, you better be. I'm watching. I'm so interested. Okay. So, this is again another unison ruling. And this is specifically about the, uh, the minus three ability. So unisons also have skills which allow them to either gain markers or they have to then lose markers to activate the skills. Um, and this specific unison has a effect that requires you to remove three markers on it. And it states, if your leader is a blue Kale card and you have five or more energy, which isn't really relevant, um, you may place this card under your leader card. And if you do, play up to one Kefla card with 30,000 power or less from your deck, then shuffle your deck. So as I stated before, if a unison reaches zero markers, it dies. Uh, so the effect states that you have to place this card under your leader card. So will you be able to place this card under your leader card, either from the drop area or from the field, or will it just die and then no effect goes off? Did you go through the two options again for me? Sure. So the first option is um, you can place this unison under your leader card and then resolve the full effect, even though it reaches zero markers. And the second option is you can't resolve the full effect because uh, the card dies from having zero markers and therefore can't be placed under the leader card. I've gone for you can place it under if you haven't sat to three or more than three. I put the same as Leon. Uh, I put that even though it reaches three, the effect will still go. Uh, even though it uses three and goes to zero, the effect will still go through. I said you can. <laughs> so, this one, different to the last one, um, if you activate the minus three, the fact that it is on zero markers kicks in first and it kills the unison, and then you cannot play anything from the deck. So, the effect does not resolve. <laughs> So you were all wrong. What the hell? I think you're wrong. Now, this interaction is between this card, which has a keyword skill called indestructible, which states this card cannot be KO'd or this card cannot be KO'd by your opponent's skills or battle and does not leave the battle area. And the question is, can you then activate the effect of Heroine's Lineage, which states, if your opponent has three or more energy, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of seven or less and gain control of it. So, can you take this card with Indestructible with Heroine's Lineage or not? I have said yes. I have said yes. So, just to clarify that is, yes, you can take it, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have put that it stays, so it the indestructible effect comes in, and it stays alive. I've said you can take his soul. <laughs> so, Callum is you correct for this for one. <laughs> no! The reason being, um, your battle area and your opponent's battle area are considered two different zones. Um, and that means when this card says, it does not leave the battle area. That refers to your battle area or whoever's battle area that it's in. So if you're trying to move this card from your opponent's battle area to yours, you can't, effectively. And the I last we one... shouldn't be allowed to read the cards because I can't read. <laughs> the last ruling, which <laughs> is one of my favorite rulings, is... Oh, now I'm invested. Yeah. Bigger notation approves. So, and this is this is uh, I've got four answers, four potential answers to this one because it's God. the last ruling. I don't remember the first one. So, your opponent controls Mind Drop Sin Shenron, which has an effect when this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill or KO'd. Draw two cards then play up to one negative energy one star ball from your drop area. And my opponent also happens to have the negative energy one star ball in their drop area. Uh, the effect of that isn't relevant for this. 
what is relevant is the unison minus four effect on my unison which states choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards gain control of it and switch it to active mode so if I were to use the minus four effect of this unison to take control of the nine drop sin Shenron, what would happen? A, the skill doesn't activate as it wasn't removed from the battle area. That is the uh, skill to draw two cards and play the negative energy one stumble. Uh, B, my opponent draws two cards and plays their one stumble. C, I draw two cards, but I don't play one star ball as I don't have one in the drop area. Or D, I draw two cards and I play my opponent's one star ball. Leon's writhing. Right <laughs> uh, Sin Shenron one again. Sorry? Can you read the Sin Shenron one well, again? Said yeah. The same thing three times. <laughs> <laughs> when this I card... know which answer I want, I think. When this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill or KO'd, draw two cards, then play up to one negative energy, one star ball from your drop area. It's your opponent that's got that. Yes. And I'm taking control of it. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> Forgotten half the answers. I'm just going to go with my instinct. Yeah, wait, repeat the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, A... The skill doesn't activate. B. My opponent draws two cards and plays their one star ball. C. I draw two cards, but I don't play one star ball as I don't have one in my drop area. Or D. I draw two cards and I play my opponent's one star ball. What was C? C was... C these nuts? <laughs> I literally typed CD's nuts to him. <laughs> <laughs> C was I draw two, but I don't have a one star ball in my drop area to play. So I don't draw. I don't play a one star ball. I'm going for D because you said you liked it. <laughs> I'm going for CD's nuts. I don't remember which one it was. I don't remember A, B, C, or D. But I put that they do all of their bullshit. You get the card but you don't do any of the effects because the card didn't die on your side. So my opponent would draw two and play that one stumble. Yeah. Okay. I did see these nuts <laughs> as well. So Noah and Patrick did C, which is I draw two, but I don't get to play anything. And Leon did D, which is I draw two and play my opponent's one stumble, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the answer to this one is I take control of his nine drop and so the auto then, the skill then triggers uh, to draw two cards and play the negative energy one double. Because I am now the owner of this card, I get the effect. So I draw two cards, but I don't get to play a one double as I don't have one in my drop area. So the answer is C. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the end of the video. I haven't be keeping track of points because I'm going to do that when I'm editing, but for the viewers, <laughs> you will see the, the final points on the screen somewhere. If I'm not right, you can just like mute all the audio and then we're sorted. Just everyone else. I'll, I'll just edit in whoever, whoever wants celebrating. Yeah, of, of course, course. Of course. Single dub. I'm really Single that good one. at editing. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.